Danny Flexon here for Second Out with my old mate Mick Conlon. Mick, how you doing? All good, Danny. Here at the new boxing booth gym, uh, what do you make of it, especially compared to the one you were used to training at? Oh, it's it's brilliant. Listen, it's a, it's a class facility, sauna and stuff in it, so you know you can't you can never beat that. Like, um, yeah, listen, two rings, warm gym. You know, it's it, it's home. So really happy to be here. Are you still, is your accommodation where you stay and everything the same as it was previously? Because this gym isn't too far from the old one. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the same kind of uh, distance, there's no, nothing that changes, although me and Josh are moving in together now, so it's, uh, that'll be the only change for me, I'm used to living by myself, but uh, I'm moving in with Josh, so it should be good. Sharing a, a flat or a house? Um, no, same bed. Yeah. Topping and tailing? <laughs> only joking, nah, nah, so, nah, we're getting the flat together, so. Um, Just giving me a headline, so. Uh, it's, it's, it's no problem, it's no problem, it'll do. Um, you're moving in together uh, soon? How soon? Yeah, yeah, it should be this week. This week. So we expect our invite to the housewarming party in the post? Um, yeah, well, there'll be a lot of cocaine hookers, so you know, if you want to come, I can't do it on front anyway because you know, I get tested a lot, so um, if you want to do the cocaine, well, I'll do it. Some people just like to watch, do you know what I mean? It's fine. <laughs> what do you think Josh is going to be like to live with? I mean, do you know anything about his habits or anything? Are you a bit worried? Um, nah, he'd be alright. He's a bit... He's a bit um, Mummy's boy, maybe. Um, so I could maybe have to take care of him a bit. If you get in there first, just put like a big Avenesian poster up on a, over his bed or something, you know. That would be that. brilliant, wouldn't it? Jesus <laughs> Christ, he'd, he'd have nightmares. Let's just hope he doesn't watch this and he knows in advance. But <laughs> let's talk about your own career. Obviously, big win for you in December, MSG, uh, a venue you know well. Wasn't the hardest victory of your career, but from an emotional perspective, how much did it mean to you? Yeah, listen, it was, uh, it was a very, very important fight for me. Um, Obviously, with everything that happened in the past, and so much people talking about it since my debut, um, any, anybody who spoke to me, maybe not only, maybe not the the waiter, the waiter world, but in, in my kind of own world, that was all I was hearing. Or when he getting that one back, when wins the rematch, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, for me to go in and, and get the victory, it was it was comfortable. Um, I'll be honest, I, I boxed in my comfort zone for for most of it. I almost took him out around the eighth. Um, Wish I probably could have, but he is a tough guy. Never, never been really stopped now. Amateur running, he's only ever been stopping cuts. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a good night. There was talk, obviously, when it got postponed um, from the FIA yeah. last year, that it might not happen. You might go in different directions. What would it have meant to you if it hadn't happened? Would it have been a, a hole in your career? Nah, listen, that was a piece of it. If it hadn't happened, it hadn't happened. The fact that it was going to happen was the reason why it went much more to me, and the, the reason it was being talked about from the start. You know, that's why I wanted it to happen, but. When we t- were told, you know, it wasn't happening in the field, I was, I thought that was it. You know, I thought that was, it wasn't going to happen. So, I made peace with it. Um, when I look back on that part of my career, the the Olympics and stuff, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for what happened because it's put me in a position where, you know, not many people are. So, um, yeah, listen, it, it is what it is, and you know, either way, what, whatever happened, that would have been a peace. You've had so many highlights in your career. You've been on massive shows. You've topped your own bills. The feeler event last year, where does that rank up in those moments? I think it's number one or number two. Um, obviously, obviously, the debut is, is one that is always going to live with me. Could be, I don't know, there's top three. There's the St. Patrick's Days and then the feeler. You know, last year and the, the debut in, in, in on St. Patrick's Day and, and MSG, is, they're, they're very hard to split, but the feeler... Maybe I'll put it at one, just because standing in a park, which is five minutes from, not even five minutes from, from my mad's house, um, walking that is, uh, somewhere I've grew up, somewhere I've, you know, I've got up there a lot of mischief growing up and had plenty of fights where I wasn't paid. Um, but standing there in front of 10,000 of my own people on a big stage, like in front of a, on front of the ring, going, standing in front of it, just like, wow. This is unbelievable. So maybe maybe that maybe that's number one at the minute, but you know, we're only going to get better and bigger. Let's look to the future. You're currently WBO number one at Featherweight, WBA number three, I believe. Which direction are you looking to go in? Um well uh, there's gonna be a, a fate announcement later today, I think. Um we were looking to go down we we either either route, you know, we have have the option, so we're already number one in WBA and or WBO and we're looking to kind of pull that position in WBA too and you know, we 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 uh, this is not gonna go out till later on anyway. So um, I'll make sure it doesn't. If you're gonna tell us who you fight, <laughs> now we 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 were campaigning until last week to get the WBA number one um, for one of the WBA belts. 
um, they try and get mandatory position for uh, the WBA champion, which is Kanzu, I think. Um, that Owasa, I think he's Japanese. They were all in agreement until last week, so we've had them pull in, and uh, and now we're fighting a uh, Colombian kind of knockout artist, um, Belmar. I can't say a second name. It's like Pid, 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 I don't know. I'll find it. You find it. You find it. You find it. But um, Jamie just told me this is the guy we're fighting. Nice, twenty wins, two losses, something like fourteen KOs or something. So, um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. St. Patrick's Day again. I've got to go out and make a a real statement. Um, and they'd set up a big, a big uh, summer in Belfast.